Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Happy Feast of Transfiguration. Today, <clears throat> not many people know what's this feast about or why are we in church. And maybe some of you came to church today not knowing that there's actually a feast in the church today. And the Feast of Transfiguration is usually hidden inside the fast of St. Mary. So we don't see much or know much. And it might come during the week, not on Sunday, but this time it comes on Sunday which is great for us to understand what is the Transfiguration Feast. It's a minor feast of the Lord Jesus Christ where our Lord Jesus Christ went up the mountain of Transfiguration, the Mount Tabor, with three disciples. Does anybody remember the disciples' names? Let's say them together. First one is what? Peter and James and John. These three disciples are like the closest to Jesus, his close. They went up the mountain and all of a sudden Jesus was shining brightly, exceedingly white and also appeared two people from the Old Testament. Anybody remember those guys' names? Moses and Elijah. So now you have the three closest disciples and the two pillars of the Old Testament, Moses and Elijah. And they're all there with Jesus on the mountain and he's shining. We need to understand what's this mean for us. That's nice for them. They had a nice show over there. They had a nice event back then. What does it mean for us today? And that's what we'll talk about. Lelo tukala wakondwe la paruku sinta kwa mbu Yesu Christu. Ija siku ya mene wanaenda kurupili wale watatu ma disciples na Yesu Christu. Kwa mene wanaenda kuja kurupili. Yesu Christu anakala wa sinta, anakala kuwala, anawala kupitilila. Elo bantu wabili wanapuela wawonekela kuchoka kumuamba kukala Moses nandani. Na Elijah, ija siku ya mene Yesu Kristu pamena na pempela Zovala, zo zinakala zovala, zonse zinashitika zinakala zotabwisa So lelo tikikusangalala kusinta kwa ambu Yesu Kristu Ija siku ya mene ambu Yesu Kristu wanakala kuwala So we're starting in Mark 9 verse 2 If you have your Bibles, open them up Mark chapter 9 verse 2 says Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up on a high mountain apart by themselves. Here, Jesus took them. I want you to remember these words. Jesus took them up the mountain by them apart by themselves. Every word means something very important for us. For us. Jesus is trying to take us higher up the mountain by ourselves. Now the key word here is Jesus wants to take us up. He took them up. They were willing to go higher with Jesus. Now when our Lord Jesus Christ is looking at all of us today in the church, He wants to take us higher. But to do that, He has to take us by ourselves because here in verse 2 it says apart separated by ourselves why because he wants us to also be transfigured let me give you the definition of transfigured it's a change a complete change in form or appearance into a more beautiful and spiritual state let me say it again it's a complete change in the way you are to a more beautiful you. You become more beautiful, more spiritual, more light. That's transfiguration. So when our Lord is saying, I want to take you up the mountain today to be by yourself, to be apart from the rest, He wants to make us into a more beautiful spiritual state. That's His goal for us. We're not just talking about an event 2,000 years ago. We're talking about a transfiguration that will happen today in the church. In the beginning of us going up a mountain with God. To be higher with God. To be more enlightened with God. And to be a more beautiful you. And a more beautiful me. And that's our goal today. chapter <clears throat> Anawatenga kutuwa kakareweka parupili. Ati ni chani, chitanda waza chani, chitanda waza chani. Ambuye Yesu Kristo, afuna lelo, ati tengi ife, tikuweze kipa muamba, kukala kutikale wabu ino. Osia nako, 
zamene ambo Yesu Kristo uh, alikufuna so chisangalala chetu cha lero yamene waita na transfiguration ikamba ati bwana kufunika ukhala wo sinta kuchoka mwamene tiriri tikale wabwino opitirira wabwino muuzimu wabwino muzochitika zamene ife tufunika uchita mu moyo wato then i want you to move to verse 8 <clears throat> we're still in mark chapter 9 now we move to verse 8 at the end it says after everything was done suddenly when they looked around the disciples they saw no one anymore but only jesus only jesus look here's the goal he's going to take us up the mountain by ourselves away from everybody else to be transfigured to be a better you a more beautiful you and me but at the end all we're going to see is not the problems not the sins not the weaknesses not the mistakes not that person who hurts me all i'm going to see is jesus who jesus. jesus that's it that's one of the goals of the transfiguration so i'm going to tell you about three things today i told you beforehand so you can be ready he's going to take us up the mountain higher by ourselves and at the end we're only going to see jesus these three things i'm going to break down for you right now Number 1 he took us up on the mountain higher that's his goal to transfigure us but he's got to do that by ourselves separated I don't know I know we don't like to be separated we like to be with everybody but we have to be separated they were separated and at the end we're only going to see Jesus Okay so let's pay attention to those three things really quick Ati lelo chamet funiko kupunzira chakuti ambu Yesu Kristo afuna kutitenga kutipereka pa mwamba pa lupili kuti ife tikachite bwanje kakale osinta ngataendo kala osinta kuli chape chindu chimozi chamet zaendo ona zaendo ona Yesu Kristo osati mavuto yamene tilikuona masikonse iyai osati kapena machimo yamene tiliku danka wa masikonse iyai koma tizai ngata sinta chape ife tizaendo ona Yesu Kristo Look when we say Jesus took us up on the mountain Which parent here doesn't want his children to go higher? Like it would be a shame for us as parents, those of you who are parents to say, "I don't want my children to be higher, to be successful, to grow." That would be a shame for us as parents. Our father wants us to go up. His desire is to take the disciples up, to take us up. But the problem is we don't want to. The problem, you know what God God is not going to force us. He's not going to force that you will go up by the mountain by, by 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 force. He wants to take us up. And he wants to grow us so we're not the same but not by force. I'll give you an example. I know it's a silly example, but we were in America last month and it was time to go to the dentist. You know how most times people don't like to go to the dentist. So it was Josiah and Mary Grace We had to tell them today you're going to the dentist. And of course they didn't like that very much. They got a little bit scared. You know the dentist, he gets in your mouth and starts drilling things and you don't know what's happening. Your whole body's shaking and a lot of pain in your mouth. But anyways, I don't like to go to the dentist by the way. I don't I know I'm sure you don't like to go to either. But anyways, I can't force my children to go to the dentist. I can't tie them up, throw them in the car, take them up to the dentist office. while they're screaming and crying and say you will go to the dentist i cannot do that as a father i have to convince them to go to the dentist and get better and to and to take care of your teeth god is the same way he's not going to force any one of us he's not going to tie us up and say go up the mountain you must grow you must be spiritual you must be holy he's not going to force any one of us but here is the thing we should be convinced today that it's our desire to go up the mountain You and I today should say I want to go higher. I'm tired of being the same level. I've been the same level for years. I've been the same spiritual level, the same friends, the same situation, the same mistakes, the same sin, the same everything. I'm still not patient, I'm still not loving, I'm still not forgiving. I'm the same. Something should click in you today. I said I want to go higher. Cuz God will not force you, but he will encourage you. Today he says number 1, he took them up. on the high mountain. He desires to take you up and I, and me up the high mountain. But not by force. But when you get up there, there's a more beautiful you and a more beautiful me 
awaiting. A more patient you, a more loving you, a more forgiving you, a more forgiving me. I would like to see Abuna Abraham, who is much higher and much kinder and much gentler than the one that is here now. And I'm sure you would like to see a more beautiful, spiritual you. That's transfiguration. That's what we're celebrating today. But the first step is, he wants to take you up. Do you want to go up with him? That's a question. Do you want to go up with him? So that's number one. He took them up on a high mountain. Number two, it says, he took them up on a high mountain apart by themselves. I want you to open the Bible with me in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 to 18. We're in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 from 14 to 18. This section, I'm not going to read it all, but I want you to read it all. It's 2 Corinthians 6 from 14 to 18. If you really want to go up the mountain, and be, but you have to be apart by yourself. You have to be separate. There's something you have to do. Now this one most people can't handle. Okay, Abuna, I want to go up the mountain. I want to be more spiritual. I want to be beautiful. I want to change. Isn't that right? Oh, I want to change. I want to grow. But here's the key. The Lord showed us to be transfigured. You got to be apart by yourself. In 2 Corinthians 6, 14 to 18, St. Paul is confirming that message. But we don't like to separate from certain friendships, certain bad habits, certain places we go, I don't know, certain TV shows, certain things we watch on the internet. It's hard to separate ourselves. You kind of read through that at the end. God is trying to tell us it's either light or darkness. You're with Him or you're not with Him. But in verse 17, focus it on verse 17. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Come out from among them. Separate from that bad habit. Maybe you just got to turn off the internet and Facebook and TV and certain shows and certain friends. I know, Abuna, you told us that before. It doesn't work. I'm telling you, you want to be a more beautiful you, you're going to have to separate from something. Someone, something. I don't know what it is for you. I know what it is for me. But here is key. Come out. Leave. Be separate. And then you'll see the beginning of a transfigured person. A more beautiful you, a more beautiful me. Eighteen. <laughs> Parents, can I tell you a secret? And maybe you know the secret. The number one 
thing that's confessed on why people sin is because I have bad friends. Your children, and maybe some of the children who are sitting here, have a challenge that the people outside who don't walk with Jesus are overtaking us. It's a huge problem, isn't it? And you think as parents, not my child, sorry to tell you, all of our children have the same temptation that the outside pressures. Now the problem is the outside pressures come into our house by our phone now. If your children have a phone, I promise you something is not right on that phone. And maybe you who are listening, also something is not right. We got to come out from this phone. We got to use the phone for what it was used to back in the old days. Calling people. Not just staying on it day and night, getting ourselves into trouble. Come out from that. Come out from certain friendships. No, my son, my daughter has good friends. You sure? Number one confessed thing to me is that I have bad friends influencing me to go in bad situations. The schools nowadays, take care. You don't know what your son or your daughter is facing. But I hear it every day, every week. But I'm telling you, we need to come out from among them. Now here's the thing I'll tell you about myself. When I was younger, it was the hardest decision for me to leave my friends and start climbing the mountain with God. It was the hardest thing because, you know what happened? I actually cut all those friendships out. And I felt I was by myself. There was no one. So it's hard for a young person to do that. But you as a parent, you as a servant, you as an uncle, you as an aunt have to support that person who is young to separate themselves. Because they're going to be all alone and feeling insecure about themselves. I was the same way, but I had to do it. And you have to do it. And your children have to do it. Separate. That's what the Lord said to be transfigured. He took them up, apart, and then they only saw him. And they were, he was shining. So what I'm saying to you today is that it is very hard to separate yourself. So let's support one another as a church. Support one another as a family. But in my life, that was a turning point. And in your life, it'll be the turning point. Please, come out from among them. Be separate. And you'll see the beginning of a beautiful you and a transfigured life. A more beautiful, you're already beautiful. A more beautiful you. <laughs> Phone is dangerous, Maning. Phone is Kuonga Ana, Munyumba. Mavuto, I put a bit of phone, a manager, Manawan, Alcono Geka. Chimosmozi, Papa Sanzo, Pamina Vanari Vangona, Busa, Vanarina Vanzao, Oipan, Vanzao, Ochta, Zosta Chita, Koma Siku Mozi, Vanakamba, and Fungo Stabana, Fungo Chokamo, Mulivanzanga. Pamina Vanachokam and Chachina Stika, Vanakala Kulibe over Tandizira, Kulibe, Amena and Alcoa supporter EI. So ni chanchi funiko tukishitika ife. Tie ife makoro tiwa sapote wana. Ife makoro tifuniko wachosa mzija zo ipa za mene wale kuchita. Elo tifuniko watandiza waja wana. Chimozi mozi na ife. Teli kukamba tine mafuto ya mene ni nao ni wandu wakunja kuja. Wandu wa mene wale kuchita influence ina waja wandu. Koma nchimozi mozi. Teni tandizani ife wachariche. Tose tilipa mozi. Teni tikale watandizana masikuwa onse. Kutipa ja wandu wachoke mzo ipa. Sichapa fupu ya ya. So number one, let's say it together, he took them up. Number one is what? He took them up. Number two, apart by themselves. Number two? What's number one? He took them up. Number two, apart by themselves. And number three, only Jesus. What's number three? Only Jesus. And I know it seems extreme, 
That your life would be only Jesus. That your every day would be only Jesus. That when you go to school, it's only Jesus. When you go to work, it's only Jesus. When you go home, it's only Jesus. But that's the transfigured life. That's what Christ died and resurrected so we could have only Jesus. That he's the first, that he's the main, that he's the focus of our life. And you say, no, 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 I have Jesus in the church and Jesus when I open the Bible for five minutes and Jesus over there. No, no, only Jesus. That means you're transfigured. That means you're growing. The one who's not growing is that Jesus is there and Jesus is over there somewhere. No, Jesus is everywhere. And it's part of every part of your life. So number three, it's only Jesus. Only Jesus. And let me, let me explain something here. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. If you have a chance, open it up. Hebrews 12, 14. We talked about it this past Wednesday when we were talking about St. Mary. It says, pursue holiness. Pursue holiness, or you'll never see the Lord. Same idea, right? He took them up on a mountain, but I have to go up the mountain. I have to pursue it. I have to want it. I have to be apart by myself. And it says in the end of Hebrews 12, 14, you will see the Lord. And what I want to tell you is that you may never see the Lord. If you never have a desire, or never make an effort to climb up the mountain, to be with God. That you never separate yourself from something or someone. You never have only Jesus. You may have Jesus in small pieces. But it's going to be the key here. If you want to see Jesus, you've got to pursue God. Pursue holiness. If you don't believe Hebrews 12, 14, would you believe Jesus' words? Open up Matthew. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. You know it. Matthew 5, verse 8. I'll say it, say it with me if you know it. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see... You know it. You can only have pure heart, holiness, up the mountain, transfigured life, if you want to see God, only Jesus. There's no other way. You can't, you can't buy yourself a chance to see Jesus. You can't pay money to see Him. The same effort you used for your school, your businesses, your work, your family your future, the same effort you do, why don't you use that to climb up the mountain, to pursue Him, so you can see Him, to be transfigured by Him? Ladies and gentlemen, that's just about us. It's about what we will do. Today in the liturgy, we need to start climbing that mountain, or we'll never be transfigured, we'll never be holy, and we'll never grow. We'll be the same small baby Christians. But I believe this church is different. I believe this church is full of light. I believe this church has already started that transfiguration. So keep climbing. Keep climbing. And separate yourself. The Lord is not going to force you up. You must pursue Him. You must desire to be with Him every day. And at the end, will be, as transfiguration is defined, a complete change of form and appearance into a more beautiful or spiritual state. More beautiful you is coming. Number one, he's going to take us up the mountain. Number two, separate ourselves. Number three, only Jesus. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Pursue holiness, for we can't see the Lord. There's a more beautiful you and a more beautiful me. Let us pray in liturgy for that. God, help me to climb. Help me to climb the mountain. Help me to go higher. Help me to be only you. I know it's hard for some people to say, that's extreme, Abuna. It's not extreme. This is the way of life. What we're talking about today is a way of life. Happy Feast of Transfiguration. We thank the Lord for showing us what it means to be a more beautiful and spiritual state. Maybe He was foreshadowing His resurrection, but He was definitely foreshadowing our resurrection and our beautiful state and us shining. May the Feast like be a reality be real to us and may the prayers of the saints glory be to god forever amen